Panatuviar features a skin editor that lets you create custom interactive interfaces for virtual tours. In this tutorial, we'll build a basic skin to help you learn not only the skin editor, but also how a skin is created and connects to the virtual tour. So here I have a tour and I've linked up the nodes already. And I'm going to output this as it is. So I'll add a web output. I'm not going to add a skin and I will generate the output. And as you can see, we have these red dots here and they also have tooltips. This is Peno 2 vrs default skin and it functions, but it's not styled. Most likely you'll want a skin that uses different hotspot icons for different types of hotspots, better fonts, and maybe even animations. Pena 2 vr has professionally designed skins you can use for your projects, and they're all found here in the web output settings. Let's check out Material Dart. The built-in skins support all the hotspot types, maps, language menus, and even different ways to navigate the tours. But it could be that you need to create a custom skin for some projects. So let's build a simple skin from scratch. So I'm going to open up a new skin editor window by selecting the empty row here in the skins list and then clicking edit skin. The first thing I'll do is save the skin. And before I get started, I'll change the canvas's grid to 10 pixels. And then I'll zoom in a little bit to make it easier to see. The first element I'll add is a text box element. I'll select it in the toolbar and then I'll click in the canvas to add it. This is going to display the project's title. So to open up the text editor, I'll double click it. Now I'll resize the text box and position it in the upper right corner. And let's see how this is looking so far. The text box is clearly not in the correct position. And this is because we haven't anchored the text box to the area where it should be positioned. In the position settings, I'll change the anchor to the upper right corner. I'll save the skin and let's see what this looks like now. Okay, that's better. Let's make the text here look a little nicer. In the text settings, we can change the font style by deselecting default. And so here I'll change the font size. I'll make the font weight bold. And I'll even add some padding around the text. I'll save the skin and we can see in the output that it's already looking a little bit better. Under the project title, I'll add another text box and this one will show the titles of the nodes, which I added earlier in user data. First, I'll give this text box an ID so it's easier to identify. And while I'm at it, I'll add one for the other text box as well. And then with the help of live preview and the option snap to grid, which you can find in the view menu, I'll position this under the project title. Now I want this text to be layered over the project title, so I don't need the text box's background color or its border. And now I'll just extend the project title down so its background lands behind the node title. And then I'll customize the font for the node title. So I'll replace the word text with a placeholder. Placeholders are used in Pana 2 vr to fill in the specified content dynamically. So in this case, we want to fill this text box with the title of the current node. And this is the menu where I can find that placeholder for user data title. Now let's see how this is looking. So first of all, the text is cut off and that we can fix by selecting auto size. 
And the other issue, again, is anchoring. We need to anchor this to the top right corner. Okay, now that's looking better yet again, but let's add some more styling. For the project title, I want to change the background color. So I'll add my hex code for the color here to change it to this beige greenish color. And then I'll change the border width to five and change the text color to white. And let's see how that's looking. Okay, so far I'm happy with this, but let's see what happens when I round the corners. You do this by changing the radius. This button here opens up the options to change individual corners. So I'll set this corner to 20 and I'll set this corner to 20 as well. Depending on your content, the elements might shift so you might have to reposition your elements to accommodate that. One last touch to make on this text box, and that is to make the background a little translucent. I also want that when the mouse hovers over the text box, the color becomes opaque. This is a condition. And to create this change, we would use a logic block. Logic blocks let us make changes based on certain conditions. Any parameter with this symbol means you can add a logic block. So we'll add one to background color. And if the mouse over this element is true, change the alpha channel to 255. And we see this working in the live preview. Let's check the output. This looks good, but there's something odd happening here. When the mouse goes over the node title text box, the background doesn't stay opaque. And this is because the node title text box doesn't have the logic block applied. But we can quickly fix this by making it a child of the project title. This way it inherits the actions and changes of its parent. Okay, that's better. Now I wanna make this change be more smooth. So in the logic block we just added, there is an option to add a transition. So I'll add that and I'll change the transition time to a half second. Okay, that's better. And I think that's enough styling. Let's move on and make this text box hide and show itself. I don't want this text box always showing. I want to have it hidden when it's clicked on. So for this, I'll add an action. And actions are like a set of instructions that we give to the skin elements. So with the project title selected, I'll double click in the table here to open the actions. The source of the action will be a mouse click and the action will be to hide itself. And this is under visibility. The type will be hide element and the target will be underscore self. This means that when the mouse clicks on the text box, it will hide itself. So let's see how this looks. Well, it works, but there's no way to bring it back. So let's add a button to hide and show it instead. Now we'll add a graphic that will act as a button to toggle this element's visibility. I'm going to grab this graphic from the components toolbox because there we have a section for icons and somewhere in here is an icon for info. Oh, there it is. And to add it, I'll double click it. I'll move it over to the corner here. Now it's all a bit too close to the edge, so I'll just select the elements and move them down and to the left. Now we can give this button an action to show the text. With it selected, I'll add an action, which will be on mouse click, show the project title.
I'll save the skin and let's check it out in the browser. Oh no, I forgot again to anchor the icon. But it, it works. <laughs> so I'll go back to the skin editor and properly anchor my button. And I'll save the skin again. Okay, so when I click the text box, it hides itself. And when I click the info button, it shows the text box again. I want this button to only be visible when the project title text box is hidden. So to do this, I'll first deselect visible, so it's not initially visible. And while I'm here, I'll give it a hand cursor. Next, I'll select the project title text box and add a new action. On mouse click, It'll not only hide itself, but it'll also show the info button. I'll save the skin and let's check that out. Okay, that's great, it works. But now we need the info button to hide again. So I'll add one more action. On mouse click, it should hide itself. And I'll call that done. I'll just rename this icon to something more meaningful like info. Oh, and a warning just popped up here. And here it tells me an action is referring to an invalid target. So what we see in actions here is that the target is now wrong because I renamed the skin ID. So I'll undo that change and instead I'll right click on the icon in the tree and choose rename element. This changes the element globally. You may have noticed these red dots here. These are the default hotspot icons and they should probably be replaced. Point hotspots are added in the viewer, but we customize them and give them actions in the skin editor. And they're linked via the skin ID. Tor nodes, for instance, are given by default the skin ID HT underscore node. So for now, let's build a custom point hotspot for Tor nodes. In the skin editor, add a point hotspot template and then give it the ID HT underscore node. The template itself isn't visible in the output and its position on the canvas is arbitrary. We just need to add a graphic to it. Again, we'll use a text box. I'll add one and then add it as a child of the hotspot template. I want to position this relative to the template and the easiest way to center it is by double clicking on position. This moves the text box's left corner to the template's center because of where it's anchored, top left. In this text box, I want to show the node's title. So again, I'll add a placeholder, but this time for hotspot title. And now we have our graphic at our point hotspot locations, but they don't have any interactivity yet. First, let's see if we can get this to look similar to the info text. Okay, that looks good. Now let's add some interactivity. Select the hotspot template and add an action. This action's source will be mouse click and the action is open next panorama. For URL, use hotspot URL and target view for the view. Let's save it and preview it. It looks good, it just needs a hand cursor and maybe a preview image of the node it's linked to. To add a preview image, we'll use the node image element. 
Select it in the toolbar and then click in the canvas to add it. This will be part of the hotspot, so I'll add it as a child element of the hotspot template. And then I'll drag it down here underneath the hotspot title and then resize it and reposition it to get it in the right spot. And let's see how that's looking. Okay, we're getting there. I'll next add a background to the node image so it's easier to see. I'll add a rectangle for the background and I'll draw it around the node image. And this acts like a border for the node image. It's also part of the hotspot, so I'll make it a child of the hotspot template, and then I'll make the node image a child of the rectangle. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that looks good. I just need to fix the positioning and get it to match with the text box. Now let's hide these previews so we only see them when the mouse hovers over the text box. For the rectangle, I'll deselect visible, and then I'll add a logic block. This condition will be when a mouse over parent is true, then visible is true. And that's working, but it doesn't really look smooth. Let's see if we can fix that. In the logic block, Transition isn't available, and this is because an element can either be visible or not visible. There's no transition. So the trick here is to use the alpha parameter. This way we can transition an element from being completely transparent to being fully opaque. I'm going to copy this logic block, and then I'll delete it. And I'll select visible, and then change the alpha to zero. I'll open the logic block and I'll paste the logic block here. I just need to change alpha to 1. And finally, I'll add a transition with a time for half a second. And let's check it out. And that's much more smooth. So far, there's only navigation with the point hotspots. I want to be able to jump around easily to all of the nodes. And for that, I can create a navigation bar. To do this, I'll use the cloner. I'll select it in the toolbar and I'll draw it here. And immediately, you see these repeated rectangles. The cloner element clones or copies whatever element you put inside of it. To work with it, I'm going to expand it by double clicking on it so that we're only working with the cloner. And then I'll add a node image to it. And in the output, you see that the nodes are already cloned. Back in the skin editor, I'll add a rectangle to the cloner to create a background for the node images and the text box which will hold the node title. I'll make the node image a child of the rectangle, and then I'll resize the node image to make some space for the text that'll go here. I also want my position for X and Y to be zero, so I'll double click on position to make sure they're set to zero. Next, I'll style the rectangle to match the rest of the skin. I'll set the border to 3 and I'll round the corners. And let's take a look at that. Now we see that the corners of the node images are exposed. And we can fix this by enabling masking for the rectangle, which will mask over the node image so its corners don't show. Next, I'll add a text box. And this is going to show the node's title. And because this is inside the cloner, the placeholder will use data from the cloned node rather than the current node. So far, all the placeholders we've added have been pulling data from the current node or the linked node. I'll resize it to fit, and I'll remove the background color and the border, and I'll also make it a child of the rectangle. 
And finally, I'll give the rectangle an action to go to the node. Mouse click will be the source, and the action is Open Next Panorama. The URL is the hotspot URL, and for the view, we'll choose Default View. I've added a map to my tour in the tour map, and I've chosen to use OpenStreetMap tiles, which are free to use. It's not yet displayed in the skin because we need to add a map element. So in the skin editor, I'll first hide the point hotspot template in the canvas to make it easier to build our map element. And then I'll draw the map. I'll save the skin and let's check it out. Okay, well that doesn't look right. This is a message from Google Maps that you'll see when no Google API key has been applied. You can click this away, but you'll still see for development purposes only watermarks. So that means to use Google Maps, you will need to add your own API key. But wait, I didn't choose Google Map tiles in my tour map, so why is it showing Google Maps here? Well, let's go into the skin editor and see if we can figure this out. So in the maps settings for map, I'll choose the map that I added in the tour map. And then for API, I'll keep it at auto, but you could choose Google or leaflet API here. And I'll save the skin and there we go. Now we're using the OpenStreetMap tiles. These are the standard map pins and they're also interactive. Let's customize them to match the rest of the skin. I'm going to go into the components toolbox to find an icon for the map pins. And here's a good one. I'll double click it to add it to the skin. Now I just need to tell the map element to use this icon for the pins. Here in the settings for clone as marker, I'll choose the icon. And like the cloner element, this will clone this icon as the map pin for all the nodes on the map. And before I forget, I'll make the pin a little bit bigger. I want to center the radar beam to the pin. It's a little bit off right now. So I'll change the anchor point of the pin to the center. Next, I'll add an action. The source will be mouse click. The action is open next panorama. For the URL, we'll use the hotspot URL and the view will be default view. Okay, we're getting somewhere here. Let's add a tooltip to these. Now I'll add a text box to the canvas and then I'll add it as a child of the map pin. I want this to be floating below the pin, so I'll move it under the pin. I'll resize it and reposition it and anchor it bottom center. And for the text, I'll add the placeholder for the hotspot title. I've styled the, the text box to match the rest of the skin here. And now I want to show the text box only when the mouse hovers over the pin. And for that, I just need to add a logic block to the visible parameter. First, I'll deselect visible, and then I'll create the condition for when the text box should be visible. And that'll be when the mouse is over its parent, which is the map pin, then it should be visible. Now I want to change this map pin color. So I'll select it in the tree and then use the color tool to change its color. I'll double click on this black bar here and then I'll add the color. Great, I'm not done yet though. In the map, I want to indicate which node 
is the current node being viewed. So back in the skin editor, I'm going to add another instance of the map pin icon. I'll add it as a child and I'll rename it to active. I'll also resize it and make sure it's anchored correctly to its parent pin. Now I'll deselect visible and create a condition for when this pin should appear. In the logic block, the trigger will be state is active, and this refers to the active node. So when a node is active, it should be visible. And let's check it out. There we go. And then I'll change the color of the radar here by clicking on the color well and changing its color. And finally, I'll make the size of the radar a little bit smaller. Now I just need to add a button to show and hide the map. I'll get an icon from the components toolbox and I'll use the text filter to find the icon. So yeah, here's a nice map icon and I'll double click it to add it to the skin. I'll give it an ID and then I'll resize it. Now I need to show the map in the canvas so I can position it near the map icon. And now I can see both of them are a little too close to the edge. So I'll select them both in the tree and then slide them down here a little. Now to add some actions to show and hide the map. I'll select the map icon and down here in the actions table, I'll double click to add an action. The source is going to be mouse click and the action will be visibility show element and map one is the target. Okay, so let's see how that works. Well, it doesn't work. And that's because the map is set to always be visible. So I'll deselect that here. And now when I click the button, the map shows, but it doesn't hide it. And luckily that's a simple fix. I'll change the action to toggle element visibility. So now the map icon will show the map if it's not showing and it'll hide it when it's showing. And that's it. We have just finished creating a custom skin from scratch. And we hope that you can use some of these basic tools and techniques for your own projects. Keep a lookout for more tutorials like this and thanks for watching.